Year 13, Chapter 10, Integration, Lesson 6, Using Partial Fractions. So we're going to have a look at this integral, the integral of 3x plus 5 over x minus 3, 2x plus 1. Now, I'm going to take this algebraic fraction and I'm going to express it as a decomposition of partial fractions. So we're going to have a over x minus 3 plus b over 2x plus 1. Now, we can then say that 3x plus 5 is equivalent to a bracket 2x plus 1 plus b bracket x minus 3. You may need to remind yourselves of the partial fractions work that you've covered previously. Effectively, I'm giving the fractions on the right a single common denominator, and then I'm equating the numerators once all denominators are the same. So I can then use this identity to find the values of a and b by choosing values of x very carefully, which will result in the brackets becoming zero. So I'm going to choose x equals 3. Now, on the left-hand side, 3 multiplied by 3 plus 5 gives me 14. Substituting into the right-hand side, this term here will become 0. And then I'm left with 7a. So that gives me a equals 2. If I then choose x equals negative a half, the left-hand side becomes 7 over 2. On the right-hand side, this term will now become 0, and the other part will become negative 7 over 2b. So we can see that b equals negative 1. Now, it's important that we go back to this step here, and we rewrite our fraction as the sum of its partial fractions. So this, of course, is 2 over x minus 3 minus 1 over 2x plus 1. And having split the original algebraic fraction here into its partial fraction constituents, we can then integrate the original function by integrating the two separate fractions. So here we go. In place of the original algebraic fraction here, I've split it up into its two partial fraction components. And I'm now going to split this into two separate integrals for ease. And I'm going to pull any multiplicative constants out in front of the integral. So I get these two separate integrals. I can now integrate both of these by inspection. I could do this by integration by substitution, but this is where being able to integrate simple functions very quickly by inspection is very, very useful. Notice there's a linear function here and a linear function here, so it makes it very, very easy to do the integration. So this factor of 2 here will just remain as part of the answer. We then get ln mod x minus 3. And we need to divide by the derivative of the inner function, but the derivative of x minus 3 is just 1. So that does not affect the answer. The second one, we've got no multiplicative factor to begin with. So we just have ln of mod 2x plus 1. But we need to divide by the derivative of this, which, of course, gives me a factor of a half. And then, of course, I have a plus constant at the end. Now, sometimes we're asked to tidy up our answer or express our answer in particular ways. So I can use my laws of logarithms here. So I can rewrite this first one as ln of x minus 3 all squared. And because the x minus 3 is being squared, that means it will be positive, And we don't require the modulus function here. And here I can rewrite this as ln of 2x plus 1 to the power of a half. And we'll assume that we're taking the positive square root here. So I can take out the modulus plus c. So ultimately, I can then express this as ln of x minus 3 all squared over the square root of 2x plus 1, because power half means square root, plus a constant. 
So example two, I've included this because people don't always realise that this requires the use of partial fractions here. They try and do some sort of inspection process. It doesn't work because the denominator is not a linear function. And also we haven't got the nice situation where one part of the integral is a derivative of the other part of the integral, which then allows us to use integration by substitution. So we have to split this up using partial fractions. So we need to factorise that denominator. So we get this. We can then express this as a over x plus b over x minus 3. This then leads to the identity 2 is equivalent to a x minus 3 plus b x. Again, I'm missing out the part where I give all of the fractions the common denominator of x, x minus 3, or I use that cross multiplying technique. We can include that if you want to as part of your working. We don't have to. We can go straight to this stage here. Now, choose our values of x carefully. If x is equal to 3, well, the left-hand side is going to be 2 regardless. This term here will become 0, and we're left with 3b. So b is equal to 2 thirds. If I then choose x to equal 0, the left-hand side is still 2, but this part becomes 0, and I'm left with negative 3a. So a is equal to negative 2 thirds. Now, I need to go back to this part here and make sure I rewrite the partial fractions carefully. I don't want the numerators to be fractional. I want to bring the fraction into the denominator. So a is negative 2 thirds, so I can write this as negative 2 over 3x, and b is positive 2 thirds. So I'm going to rewrite the second fraction as 2 over 3 bracket x minus 3. And then I'm now going to carry out the integration in the knowledge that this function here, this fraction, can be expressed as this sum of partial fractions. So here is the integral broken down. And let's split it up into two separate integrals, also taking out any constant multiplicative factors for ease. Now again, I want to make use of integration by inspection here because it's so much simpler than having to set out a formal integration by substitution for the blue integral. So the green integral simply gives me negative 2 thirds ln mod x. And then for the blue integral, 2 thirds is, of course, a multiplicative factor here at the start. I then want ln of mod x subtract 3, divide by the derivative of this function here, which is just 1, so that makes no change, and then plus c. Now I'm going to tidy up the first two parts of this by factorising out the 2 thirds, and I then have ln of mod x minus 3 minus ln mod x. And then there's the plus c at the end. So this gives me 2 thirds of ln mod x minus 3 over x plus my constant of integration. So next example, we're going to express 3x plus 1 over x minus 1 all squared x plus 2 is the sum of partial fractions. We will then carry out an integral after we have done this. So my first job is to set up the partial fractions. Now we have to be a little bit more careful here because you may have noticed there is a repeated factor in the denominator. Have you seen that there? And that, of course, means that the three partial fractions have to take a particular format. We will have a over x minus 1. We'll then have b over x minus 1 squared, and then c over the other factor, x plus 2. Make sure you go back and perhaps revisit the lesson on partial fractions if this is something you've forgotten. Now, when we're thinking about common denominators, Always think about what each denominator is missing. Now, x minus 1 needs to be x minus 1 squared, so it needs an x minus 1. It also needs an x plus 2, and the same would be true of the numerator. 
for the second fraction, we already have the x minus 1 squared in the common denominator, but we need an x plus 2. Same with the numerator. And with the third partial fraction, we have the x plus 2, but we need the x minus 1 squared. Now, once all the denominators are equivalent, we know that the numerators will be equivalent, so we end up with this result here. So I'm simply equating the numerators on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. You could write this out with the denominators as well, first of all, and then equate the numerators, but we can see where this is, where this is going, so we can take this shortcut. Now, choose your values of x carefully. I'm going to start off by choosing x equals 1, which will cause this to become 0 and this to become 0. So my left-hand side will become 4, and in my right-hand side, I'm going to end up with 3b. So b is equal to 4 thirds. I'm then going to choose x equals negative 2. This will, st will be 0 again, and this will be 0. But I'm left with, on the right-hand side, a value of 9c. And on the left-hand side, I'm left with a value of negative 5. So I get the fractional result c equals negative 5 ninths. Now, if you recall from the partial fractions topic, we can then find a in multiple different ways. We can expand and compare coefficients. We could substitute in another value of x. We can solve simultaneous equations. Often the easiest way is to choose a value of x which is simple, like x equals 0, and substitute that in. The left-hand side then becomes 1. In the right-hand side, none of the three parts are going to cancel, so we need to include a, b, and c here. So if x equals 0, we get negative 2a plus 2b plus c. But because we know the values of b and c, we can substitute them into this and then work out the value of a. And it turns out a is equal to positive 5 ninths. So here are the three fractions expressed separately. Now, we're then going to integrate. So we're finding the integral of this original fraction, which we know is going to be the integral of the three separate results above. So writing them all out, pulling multiplicative constants out in front, we have this for the first integral. Now, notice the second integral I'm going to rewrite like this. And then we get to the third integral, which, again, pulling out the multiplicative factor, we end up with this. Now, all three can be integrated by inspection. Look at the inner functions in all of them. They're all linear. So they all lend themselves to a very simple integration by inspection. The first one, we are going to get 5 ninths ln mod x minus 1. The derivative of the inner function is 1. And that makes no change. We then get, for this result, there's the 4 thirds, but this is not going to result in an answer that involves ln. It's a simple power function, x minus 1 all to the power of negative 2. So it becomes x minus 1 to the power of negative 1, and then we divide by the new power of negative 1. We also should divide by the derivative of this inner function, but that is just 1. So it doesn't really make any difference to the answer at all. Now, the last one is another ln function, 5 ninths ln mod x plus 2. And again, the derivative of the inner function is just 1, so no change to the answer. And don't forget plus the constant of integration. So now comes the job of tidying. And because here and here there is a multiplicative factor of 5 ninths, I would take out the 5 ninths and then have ln mod x minus 1 over x plus 2 which is an easier way of writing ln of x minus 1 subtract ln of x plus 2. So I'm making use of my laws of logarithms here. 
If you want to put the subtraction step in and then tidy up afterwards, of course that's fine. We then have minus 4 thirds x minus 1 to the negative 1. Or if you prefer, four bra 3 brackets x minus 1 in the denominator. And then ultimately, let's make sure we include plus c at the end. So let's now look at a definite integral. We're going to evaluate this integral and give our answer as a single logarithm. So there might be some temptation to try and do this with substitution, but you will notice the denominator, x squared minus 5x plus 6, does not differentiate to a multiple of the numerator. So there isn't going to be a neat cancellation here. It's always worth checking that when there is a quadratic in the denominator and a linear function in the numerator, but unfortunately this isn't going to work. So let's set up our partial fractions. We need to factorise the denominator as well. And then let's set up the two fractions ready for the integration. Now again, I'm going to miss out the step where we show the common denominators on all three fractions and I'm going to go straight to the result that tells me that we have this identity here when we equate the numerators on the left and right hand sides. I'm then at the point where I can choose my values of x, so x equals 2 first of all will wipe out this part here. So I get 3 on the left hand side and on the right hand side I get minus b, so b equals negative 3. I'm then going to choose x equals 3 which will wipe out this part here. On the left hand side I get 5 and on the right hand side I get a, so a just equals 5. So I can go back to my original fractions here and show that this is 5 over x minus 3 minus 3 over x minus 2. And we're ready to do the integration. So let's now complete our integral. We have everything written out carefully. So here we're going to get 5 ln mod x minus 3. And let's put in our limits 1 and 4 here. Now, in both cases, the derivative of the inner function is 1. So when we divide by that, it doesn't change the overall result. So here we have 3 ln mod x take 2 and our limits in place as well. So let's now substitute in the limits. I'm going to start with this one here, being very careful throughout. So that's going to give me 5 ln mod 1 minus 5 ln mod negative 2. You can see the modulus function is going to be important here. Now, don't forget that there's a negative here, a subtraction there. So be very careful when you do the second part, when you substitute in the values for the second part. So upper limit, I get 3 ln mod 2. Take away 3 ln mod negative 1. Now, what's going to happen with these results? Now, this result here is going to equal 0 because ln 1 equals 0. This result here will also equal 0 because ln of the mod of negative 1 is equal to the ln of 1 because the modulus of negative 1 is 1 and then you get a 0 here as well. So it's only the other two parts that contribute here. So we get negative 5 ln 2 once we take the modulus there of the green part and then we're subtracting from that 3 ln 2 so this can be simplified to give us negative 8 ln 2. Now, this can now be simplified very neatly because of this negative 8 here. We can use our laws of logarithms to make this ln of 2 to the power of negative 8, which is then ln of 1 over 256.